Hello and welcome back and in today's video I'm going to show you guys how to install Windows Server on your QNAP NAS. Before I go any further though let's highlight straight away that even though I'm primarily going to talk about Windows Server 2016 and 19 you can install pretty much any version of Windows Server on your QNAP NAS using the guide I'm going to show you today. In fact, you can use this to create multiple Windows virtual machines on your QNAP NAS while still utilizing the QNAP NAS and its own operating system and graphical user interface. So there's a few extra steps to this and this video is going to fast forward over some bits, but I will make recommendations throughout the whole video about where to get certain items. So first and foremost, when you're setting this up, the first thing you're probably going to need is to head over to the Microsoft Evaluation Center. And this is where you can download images of Windows Server. Now you may already have a digital ISO or VM version of Windows Server, but what I recommend is if you're going to be testing this out for the first time and you still want to use your own license, this is a great way to get a Windows VM uh, a virtual machine of Windows Server. And what we're going to use today is both Windows Server 2019 and Windows Server 2016. So say you wanted to use Windows to Server 2016 and you already have an existing license, head down to here, click the plus symbol. It will then open up the options for Windows Server 2016. And from here, you have to say which version you'd like an Azure, a, a VL or an ISO. I recommend an ISO for this experiment then click continue, enter your details, and it'll allow you to download a six or seven gigabyte image of Windows Server. The same goes for Windows Server 2019. The servers are pretty good and they will download pretty quickly. And what I recommend is taking those images and either having them on the PC that you're gonna be utilizing for installing Windows Server on your NAS, or putting them directly on the NAS somewhere in file station create their own folder if need be, but as long as they're in an accessible directory. I've already done this in the past, and there we have Windows Server 2019 and Windows Server 2019, so 16 and 19, sorry. Now, you can also stick it on a USB stick, and then connect the USB stick to your QNAP NAS, and then run the installation from there, but either way, just make sure that the files are on the QNAP NAS one way or another. The next thing you need to do is head over to the App Center and from there, look for an application called Virtualization Station. This is QNAP's own VM software. And from here, you're able to install virtual environments. The installation of this application will take a little bit of time. It's quite a large app. It's nearly a gig in size and it has loads of updates. And it's very well looked after this application and is still one of the best Swiss Army knife tools for VMs that I've ever seen on a NAS. Once it's installed, you will then be invited to deploy the application where it will check about virtual switches and your memory. With regards to memory, make sure you've got at least four gig to play with on your NAS because you're gonna to want to utilize two or three gigabytes towards Windows Server and remain at least one gig to keep the NAS running. With regards to virtual switches, the reason they bring up virtual switches is because your machine, your Windows Server, is going to need its own network port and connection. And the virtual switch stage will invite you to dedicate a virtual port to your virtual machine. So once you've installed that, like I already have, either click open here or click open on the list of applications here, or you can click it on the main desktop. For now, I'm going to click open here. Once the application has been installed, it will recommend to you that you should head over to the VM Marketplace where there will be numerous virtual machines that you can download directly to your NAS and deploy as trials or more. On top of that, you can install um, a trial of Windows-based virtual machines ranging from Windows 7 to Windows 10 here. And if you have an existing virtual machine or a Windows Server virtual machine that you've exported from your existing system, you can import it onto the NAS from here, either from your local machine that you've got, or by putting that image of your previous Windows Server or virtual machine onto the NAS. You can even convert other pre-existing kinds of virtual environment into an image better suited to the NAS. Loads of tools. But for now, let's create our Windows Server virtual machine. 
So your next step is to head over to create VM. You need to name your VM, which we're going to call Windows Server. And just for the sake of ease, we're going to focus the rest of the video on an installation of Windows Server 2016. There are other, you, I mean, you can utilize Windows Server 2019 if you've got it, but I'm using a four core NAS with, I believe, four to eight gig of memory. And I'm not quite sure the hardware specifications on this particular NAS are going to be sufficient for this Windows Server 2019. So I'm going to stick with 16 for now. Now I'm going to dedicate, of my 4 gig, I'm going to dedicate 2 gig to my uh, virtual machine. I'm highlighting here that I'm going to be using a Windows platform, but again you can use other virtual platforms if you so choose. Next, I'm going to highlight that I'm utilizing Windows Server 2016. Then, scroll down further, assign the number of cores so that your CPU will have some cores currently available and you have to assign in the, the amount of your CPU you're going to dedicate to this Windows Server. I'm going to go with two cores, but I do recommend four. Heading down, select the memory, which we've already done. And remember not to use all the memory available on your NAS because that will make the NAS appear sluggish. Next on CD image, click browse and find the virtual machine images that we downloaded. As mentioned, I've got Windows Server 2009, uh, 19, and 2016. We're going to use 2016. It's found that image, and next it will invite you to say where you want the files from your virtual machine to live. For me, I'm going to put them inside the download folder along with what the work we're doing so far. But I do recommend that you create a separate directory for your Windows Server data. After this, it will invite you how much space on the available NAS do you want to dedicate to your virtual machine. The Windows Server um, system is running on top of the NAS system. Consequently, you can use up to the total available storage on your NAS. Personally, I would recommend leaving space on the NAS for backups and images so you can create snapshots of your virtual machine to cycle back to later if need be. For now, for the sake of ease, I'm just going to assign 500 gig of data to this virtual machine. As you can see, I've already assigned a virtual switch port on this um, virtual machine uh, virtualization station uh, sandbox. But if you've created multiple ports and you've got multiple virtual machines, you can choose between them here. Next, you can create a password. A VNC password is useful if you're going to create remote access via the network or the internet and will stop um, uninvited users getting in. I'm going to leave it blank for now, but I do recommend you add a password for your installation. Then we click OK. It's going to warn us that we should use a password, but I'm going to proceed without one. From here, Virtualization Station is now preparing the virtual sandbox that we've been creating for Windows Server 2016. It's assigned the cores, it's assigned the memory, and when we're ready, we can click Start and it will boot our virtual machine, which is a virtual software copy of a hardware server. We can also look at all of the different attributes of our virtual machine. So, for example, if we head to the settings bar, we can see the name of our, pro, our name of our system and we can see the total storage that we've assigned to it. On top of that, you can insert virtual CDs that can be accessed by your virtual machine for Windows Server if you've got upgrades that come on hard copy sticks. And on top of that, you can assign everything from USB ports on the NAS to be dedicated to your Windows Server or install graphics cards, take snapshots, clone the system so you can create two Windows servers running parallel and keep old records so you can revert back to them and a number of other cool options that are readily available. If your NAS has a PCIe slot, you can assign a graphics card, a sound card, a RAID card or more and it can be as dedicated to the Windows Server. There are loads of options readily available for configuration of creating the perfect Windows Server for you. From here, we can go back to this main screen and we can start our Windows Server as if we were pressing the power button on a physical computer. From here, it is now going to boot our Windows Server just like it would if we were operating a physical version 
and from now we can click here and it will open in a separate tab the visual user interface of our virtual computer that has Windows Server installing as we speak. From here installation of Windows Server is identical to that of a standard Windows Server in, uh, installation on a PC. If we head back to here we can see a small image of what's going on on our virtual machine and we can access it via this LAN port, uh, not this LAN port, this link. And from here, the installation of Virtualization Station is going to take place. All the while, this is happening in the background with the attributes and dedicated values of Windows Server uh, on your hardware within the NAS being dictated at all times. This process of installation is going to take a while. And if you've ever installed a Windows PC before, it's as straightforward as installing any version of Windows. As we can see already, and I shouldn't have needed to click that, but nevertheless, we'll go in anyway, we can see the installation window appearing on our Windows machine. I can only assume that my use of OBS is definitely affecting the refresh rate of this screen right now. So I apologize for the delay there of the refresh on screen. Don't worry, that won't happen to you. Now, it's also worth highlighting this IP. Because if you want, you don't have to access your Windows Server via a PC in this manner. On screen here, we're just making our way in and we can carry on the installation. I'm just going to go ahead and click Next and let that install in the background while I talk. Now, if you want to access your Windows Server, you can do it via the web browser just like we're doing right now. You can even change a number of the settings and lower the picture quality and heighten it. And go for the evaluation version but again if you have a license key go for these versions here click next it will then invite us to select an area oh no first terms and conditions then we're going to do a fresh installation we've got no data on here already we're going to click next and it will begin our installation of windows server 2016 on our NAS in the background. And again, you can heighten or lower the picture quality as well as use certain functions if you don't have a keyboard to hand. You can even change a number of the VM settings directly from this VM portal. As I touched on just earlier on, I didn't get to finish. If you take this IP here, copy it, head down to your Windows platform right now and type Windows Desktop, you can create of remote access to your VM. You just need to add your IP into this window, removing the HTTP at the beginning. And from here, you can then access your virtual Windows server remotely via any connected PC on the network. Alternatively, if you set up from within Windows server remote access over the internet, you can add that value there too. There's other means you can install TeamViewer and more. But for now, what I'm going to do is fast forward to the completion of the installation of Windows Server. OK, so the installation completed and we're back on the reboot of that VM. For those that aren't aware, when you install any version of Windows for the first time, particularly one that has a GUI, a graphical user interface, um, like Windows Server 2016 and 19, this or this edition at least, standard, then after those initialization files are installed, the system will reboot and then go into the customization and first time setup screen. So we'll get rid of that tab there. And what we'll do is we'll start entering some details. So I'm going to go with the very imaginative password of password. So if we have a look, there it is, password, password. Let's see if Windows will let me get away with that. Oh, no, it's not good enough. You're right, we should make it password one. And fingers crossed, yep, it'll let us proceed. So now we're finalizing the settings of our VM for the first time installation. It's now gonna assign those values that I've just created for user credentials, and now it's going to reboot the virtual machine. During the installation, it was worth highlighting that memory consumption got exceptionally high during this, and I didn't take note of the fact that the four gig that I dedicated to this virtual machine was actually insufficient uh, to run both the VM and the uh, QNAP NAS, so I had to scale down the memory. But that's another thing you can do that's actually quite cool. You can scale the memory of a VM. You just have to pop it on standby 
and then you can change some of those values accordingly. But as you can see, we've now logged into our virtual machine. Now, if you're accessing a virtual machine via a web portal like this, then it's worth highlighting. Uh, this doesn't affect if you're using the remote control option, the remote connection uh, we talked about earlier. When it says control, alt and delete to unlock, if you tap control, alt and delete here on a PC, that's gonna happen, which is not what we want. We don't want an overview screen. So just remember, if you do want to use control, alt, delete while accessing a VM remotely like this, use the control, alt, delete option here. We'll click those buttons virtually, and when you click them there, it then adds them to the screen there for you. Now, we've logged in to our Windows Server 2016 that's still running on our NAS here in the background. There we go. We've got all the settings and the memory being utilized there. And again, that's really it. We've now installed Windows Server as evaluation mode on this NAS. If you've got an existing license, you can use it and this VM will have internet access, network access, and has everything that you would expect in a Windows Server installation, along with the graphical user interface that's familiar to those of you that have ever used Windows Server or purchased a NAS that features Windows Storage Server already installed. So that's it, we can wrap things up here. This isn't gonna be a review of Windows Server, that can be for another video, and let's face it, there are plenty of them out there. This video should help you install any kind of VM on your QNAP now. Just make sure that you've either got a CPU that's graphically enabled, or a PCIe slot that can install a graphics card that's supported by QNAP. And of course, lots of memory. Do remember to add more memory as you add more VMs, because these suckers get hungry. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, if you do need to shut down your VM, you can always use these power options here, along with configuring everything from USB to virtual CDs, memory and more, all here on this option menu. Click like if you've enjoyed this video, I found it helpful, because it helps me understand what you guys want to learn about in the world of NAS, and click subscribe to learn more about all the innovations within network attached storage from QNAP and others, all the way through this year and more. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.